In over 300 programmes, Earth Report viewers have witnessed how our global economy is being undermined by the unravelling of the web of life. For over four years, 2,000 scientists have been reviewing precisely what services ecosystems provide to us humans. The Millennium Ecosystem Assessment is very different from the many other reports that have gone before. In this episode, we travel to Cameroon. We examine areas where saving the environment can go hand in hand with saving money. The Congo Basin Forest is the second biggest tropical forest region after the Amazon. Stretching across 190 million hectares, it's home to half the continent's wild animals, as well as more than 10,000 recorded plant species. This is the village of Bello, a farming community. Slash and burn cultivation is a threat to the forest. If deforestation goes on at its present pace, about 70% of the forest in the Congo Basin may be gone by 2040. Millennium Assessment field workers have been developing farming techniques in this region since 1998. Every morning, Comfort Loa Mifakig leaves her family and makes her way to the village outskirts, to the local nursery that she runs. Until the intervention of Comfort and others like her, farmers in this region cultivated cash crops like cocoa and coffee. This made them vulnerable to price fluctuation. But Comfort has been part of the team that's worked closely with communities like Bello. The aim has been to pinpoint high-value indigenous fruit trees that are a realistic alternative for farmers, earning them regular money while also ending the traditional slash-and-burn farming. The Safu tree has transformed the fortunes of the villagers. In the last four years, project researchers say income for farmers has increased between 20 to 30 percent. Today, almost 100 villages are taking part in tree domestication in Cameroon. The Safu fruit, or African plum, is used widely both nationally and internationally. Millennium Partners are hoping to extend the techniques throughout the Congo Basin, Gabon, Equatorial Guinea and the DRC. Organisers say the results of the work are helping reduce poverty in the region, one of the principal goals of the Millennium Assessment. Well, actually in the past, people did not know the value of trees in their environment. But now with the technology that we have here, people come every day to, to see exactly what is going on here. Then when we, when we teach them, now they go back, now they apply in their own farms. It increases their, their income because from now, if a farmer knows that he will plant a safo tree and harvest after three years, equally it will, it will help that farmer to, to pay children's school fees, pay hospital bills and pay electricity bills. Farmer Banga Anthony stimulates rooting on a safu tree by covering it in sawdust, something he learned at the nursery. Is it possible to have economic growth without damaging the nature? This is exactly the answer of participatory tree domestication. This is what we are trying to address. Because uh, uh, if you cultivate on large scale uh, species, exotic species not adapted to environment, you arm the environment. But by cultivating these well adapted species in their ecosystem, you don't arm the nature. Where once the values of slash and burn farming were taught to children, today in Bello, the lesson is in reinvigorating soil using natural nutrients. The planting of safu is being passed on to the next generation. Personally, I'm very optimistic. That's why I'm, I'm in the process. I've been uh, since the inception of the MA. Uh, we are here for the long haul. Uh, to me, uh, this uh, process of bringing the best of uh, scientific knowledge to the attention of policymakers is uh, one hopeful uh, approach that we must continue doing if there's going to be a better hope of uh, our living. Thank you.